This video is about a trip I just got back from to go visit SV Seeker. Doug's videos uh, were what first put the idea into my mind to try to learn how to do videos when I was going to make uh, the sailing rowboat Grace. And as the project nears the launch, I just felt like I wanted to take this weekend and drive down and see it for myself. So I'm really glad I made the trip. <laughs> it was a long drive, but uh, very enjoyable. So this is my visit to SB Seeker and meeting Doug Jackson. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Press in to go to Ute Street, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Pretty winter sky. Nomad out there one time, just to say I've done it. <laughs> it's interesting. In the West. Pretty morning, but frost. I thought I'd come far enough south down here to avoid that. So, why such a long road trip to go meet Doug Jackson and see this bee seeker? It's a good question. This will end up being about a 1500 mile round trip drive, which I'm thoroughly enjoying this bit of at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a long trip for such a small stay. And I think it's a combination of things. Um, I had started to watch a couple of YouTubes for the first time uh, building and rebuilding some boats and got led over to Doug's project. And even though I love wood, I was quickly captured by a combination of things that I've really enjoyed about uh, what Doug's done with this project. I just wanted to come and see it for myself before uh, the boat gets launched and things will change. I want to see the uh, eight-year area shipyard there that he's managed to finish this project in. And uh, some of the things I really appreciate, I think a lot of people appreciate about Doug's project. Uh, one is he just fearlessly takes on brand new areas of technique and technology with a combination of careful objective research, experimentation, and ingenuity. <laughs> and uh, was not afraid to show you the uh, false starts, and stops, uh, setbacks, and things like that along the way. Whether it's learning to do casting for some of the big winch pieces or the waterproof doors or en endless things on and on lately, the wiring, the plumbing uh, on such a substantial ship really. Another thing is his uh, interest in teaching people and uh, that's been a blast to watch this sort of community thing form, people coming by to work, I wish I'd been able to do that. And also helping to champion other people with their uh, YouTube work, especially boat builders. But also, you know, just always loves to uh, motivate people about building things. That's a nice view there. And that's, I think, scratches a real itch in our culture right now. People that um, have been disconnected from reality in some ways, which if you're going to actually construct something that works, you're forced to cross that chasm and engage with reality and truth at a sort of basic level. It's a big part of our uh, cultural philosophy that's lost that is a terrible thing. I think people are hurting from it and are drawn to this sort of project for that reason. Uh, building something concrete as opposed to, say, IT, which is my field and was Doug's as well, I think. Uh, which I, I love programming, but uh, 
building something out of wood or steel, uh, there's something concrete, physical, real about that that's very enjoyable, scratches an itch, I think, for a lot of people in our culture. And also, uh, the creative process, which I think as a Christian is something that's spiritual, the, the ability to go from idea and looking forward in time and thinking through the issues and doing design work and then bringing that design to fruition in reality. I think there's a spiritual component of that and it's just a delight to watch someone else do it and to be able to do that yourself. Oh yeah, one more thing. Seeker is a boat, so nothing like uh, building your own boat. And I have some questions I hope I get a chance to ask Doug. I don't know if he'll want to talk like to a camera or whatever. He does that all the time. But I'd love to know things like what got him started uh, thinking of the steel origami uh, project and whether the YouTube uh, internet community component of it was part of the original idea or whether that sort of evolved along the way. Stuff like that. Got my little list of questions, we'll see. There's downtown Tulsa up ahead. Saw a sign for the port of Catusa, I think. <laughs> There she is. There's some work going on in there. That's the man himself, I think. And there's Love Me Tender. <laughs> there he is. Do we have to do much to line this thing up? How you doing? Good. Thanks for letting me in early. I don't want to. Where I know. are you from? Columbus, Ohio. Oh. Drove all the way over just to see. Seeker, huh? See Seeker and you guys in the whole outfit before she goes in the water and goes away. All right, full send. Okay. Do it. How many passes does it take for it to build up? Oh, I. It might be five or six passes before we actually start cutting something. This, I, it started back at zero. All right, no problem. I love that sign. Some special sauce. <laughs> Not to be operated by. Probably four years ago. Yeah. Yeah, so then I backed up and started from the beginning. Oh, okay. You were working on the tender, maybe. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's about four years ago. Yeah, fantastic. I loved it. Yeah. And so much enjoyment. Come on, that's up, cool. I'll show you around. So you're getting down to the. Yeah, we got. Close to the. I'd like to be working on the wet with the pot house with my guy that wants to work on the pot house. It's coming until later this month. Love to do a work session. It's just. Uh, that's all about schedule. It is. Folks like you. Oh, there's that piece of paper. That's so cool. I, I really yeah, enjoyed that, this. That is the neatest thing. Did you see the uh, Netflix thing, uh, Octopus, My Teacher, or whatever that, no, that thing but is? No, it's on my list. Somebody else talked to me about it. My, my uh, Octopus, My Teacher, is that the name of it? It's, it's close. That's close. My Teacher, the, the Octopus, something, something like that. that. Yeah. yeah, I got it on my list. It's so scary smart for being such odd things. Ingenious. You know, their brain is actually part of their neural system. With, like, it's their distributed, brain. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. was talking it's about the freakiest freaking animal. Each on the one of these little guys has, has its, its own, own independent little process. Do its thing. <laughs> and it just shouts back, I got a piece of food. I don't want to give anything away, but the thing became affectionate with him over oh, yeah, a period of bomb. a year of diving. I was telling stories about divers that go back and the octopus recognizes them. 
Your masts are over there on the trailer. I yeah. saw that. Yeah. yeah. That trailer also had a rack to take this onto it. They'll pick up our pilot house and put it on. We'll put the davits on. We'll put the forward uh, monkey bars on. And uh, so we'll everything but the mast. Hopefully we can get it and get ready. Then we put the boat in the water. We have a big party and we step the mast. And the mast after yeah. you're in. Yeah. yeah. We had a chain fall over there, but I, I didn't like it because it took way too much power to yep. open. So we got a three to one reduction of ratio on what we're putting in. And now. that was a sprocket you're yeah, milling yeah, up over there. To, yeah. I love the uh, stainless mast idea that I, you know, built tiny, tiny, the opposite end of the spectrum from well, you your know, boats. That's part of the Chinese junk that is why I selected is because on the unstayed rigging. It's just so there's. Well, the deck crane can now work over the side, and there's nothing there. Yep, I love it for little boats because you can convert them to a rowboat, motorboat. Yeah. Kayak, you know, the rig comes in and out of it. But well, we had ideas of hinges and counterweights and so forth, so I could bring that mass down. And then oh, that, that, that quickly went out the window. It's like, <laughs> mass weighs 1,500 pounds. Yeah, that's a beefy. Well, it's three eighths, yeah, because it's unstayed, it's three eighths inch yeah. steel wall pipe. That's, that's the trade off. We tapered the last 25 feet of it. The mast I built for my little 14 foot sailing rowboat, just a big club, but yeah. that's the trade off. Yeah. So you this. had an unstayed on your rowboat then? Mm-hmm. So you could just gaff rig so it's yeah, well, short it's enough to sit down it. inside the boat? What's... But you talk to a sailor and they freak out when they hear unstayed. And I was like, well, didn't you learn it's in an unstayed off. boat? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were serious when the uh, one of the uh, two cranes Went got down. tipped over and cannibalized. I'm like, if I'm going <laughs> to see this thing, i got to get my ass out here. We, we got, yeah, this thing came out great. I remember watching you. Yeah, and I'm happy. I think I get guys. 200 feet of uh, 5 8 inch chain on there. We'll find some generous towboat going down the Mississippi that's <laughs> getting rid of their... Yeah, I mean, they trade it out. They, they use it for two years and get new stuff, you know? Right. Crush zone. Crush zone, yeah. yeah. Kind of a stark name. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> but it gives us a place to bolt on the hitch. Yeah, I'm glad to see it doesn't have any water in it. So. Do you ever miss your IT stuff? You know, I thought I might because I enjoyed it so much. You know, you're thinks, Oracle. I was an Oracle database administrator. DBA, yeah. I was a programmer before that. So I'm going down. I'm out of it. I'm not going back. It's it's also I don't know if you felt this way. I felt like the part of programming I enjoyed was like building something concrete, but it was alive. You know, so you're designing. Yeah. You're envisioning something, making it yeah. real. Sometimes it but, can, yeah, it'd be like a child that can do shit in the middle of the night that you did not expect it to yeah. do. You did not tell it to do that, but it's doing it anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah, ours is a development framework, so it was, uh, you, you built what? <laughs> and you expect it to work? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you, how your time management, I've, I've been amazed. Like, you've responded twice to, to my emails within a day. So I'm trying to well, think. Well, that's my IT background. It's like. But you're you're having to it think not, 20 not steps not ahead on this thing with all the research and then you're doing the actual construction and keeping up with social media and editing those videos i'm like yeah when uh, does this dude sleep i went to bed one o'clock <laughs> this morning so yeah what takes the most of your time do you think of all those different uh, sure it varies depending yeah on it where varies um i don't build probably as much as i'd like to this is great. It's, it's just so amazing seeing this after watching, you know, the videos. Yeah. It's, in, in one sense, it's like, yep. And I'm like, wait, but I'm oh. actually here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is fantastic. Congratulations. Well, I love it. You know, I mean, we used to all die around 48, you know. Right. 44. So I'm, yeah. I'm turning 62 this year. That's right. Yeah. We were, we were way into our second run. <laughs> So, just make it a good one. Yep. You know, I really enjoyed your process figuring all this stuff out. I know yeah. that that goes back a ways now. That right? is That's... so much of the fun. Yeah, those we built those way early on. We built the whole thing. So it's got these are electrical parts in here actually. This was jam nuts for uh, electrical fittings. They have nothing's been adjusted yet. Right. But there's a spring back in there and a bolt and a plate. And so these are spring compression. Pour their own gaskets in there. I remember that. Um, it's all. And it's so much that you can learn, you know, along the way. Everything's a little bit new. That's one of the fun things I think about why people have enjoyed your project so much is you're constantly just delving into something just that trying. you have little or no background in. You've you figured yeah, out. Yeah. And not, you share the process along the way. I'm the guy that's like, I'll try it. 
Yeah, we'll give it's it a shot. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Like what you said, we say uh, we build it right. We build it twice. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard to it's hard to redo something i know it's discouraging but i always found this in software too it's, something disastrous happens i gotta redo something and it feels really bad but the second time around you realize it's, it's like 15 percent of the time and cleaner yeah. and yeah yeah more more elegant elegant that's the word i'm looking for i love how this space is laid out that'll I, yeah. that'll work out really well yeah, I just had four guys. I mean, I had two guys over it. They said, what do you need? I said, I need four bunks up there. And what do you want to build it out of? I, I don't know. What do you want to build it out of? I got wood and I got aluminum <laughs> pipe. Let's do aluminum pipe. It's okay. There it is. Literally, if, you, if you're that terrified of anything, you can start right at the edge. That, right. that whole idea of go out of your comfort zone, horrible idea. Go right up to the edge of your comfort zone stretch, and get comfortable being stretch there. Stretch the edge. And then you'll next time you come up to the edge, you'll notice you'll take another step a little further. That's that's, great. that's the way I've done it with this boat. That's why I got over it was like, you know, from oh God, no, I'll never build a boat and sail the, the ocean to where I am now. Yeah. And it's it's a progression. I know that I'm gonna be scared the first time I get out in, in a in a serious sailing conditions. Right. So don't go out in the serious ones, go out in the mildly serious ones. We're gonna do some touch of painting in here. I mean, you have to be thinking so far ahead it's not that on hard. all of these details. Yeah, it's not that hard. It's like a software thing. You, you, you componentize it into these pieces, and then you break those down into even smaller pieces. And even on a boat, see, on software, you can start on all, all of them at the same time yeah. sometimes. But on a boat, you can't. You got to have the hull. It's got to be in series. And then it's like, what's the next thing? Well, bulkheads would be nice now, you know. Right. And then, well, where's the bulkhead go? Well, how long is your propeller shaft? You know. Yep. So most of these things, it just you just grow into it. And it's like, oh, boy, are you gonna use that? Space? But I'm sure you're sitting there way ahead, iterating oh, on. Well, oh, yeah. if we if we move this, we believe that. it's flexible too. Yeah. Because you don't know who's gonna come along with a better idea. And there's lots of people that have their ideas built into this boat that you know I think they're mine, but they're not. It's somebody I talked to, and they said, oh, you ought to think about this, and it got stored away somewhere, and then it yeah. gets used. Like that fuel manifold over there on the wall. That's yeah. All those pipes coming that's up. That's really cool. That's the in and out for the six fuel tanks out underneath the cargo hold. Yeah, you've had some great professionals come in on, yeah. on all these different yeah. details. Well, and I've had complete amateurs, too. Like um, Chris Gasson, he's from Germany, and he welded all these frame plates in through this whole thing. I showed him how to use a MIG welder, and he's like... Dude, that's fine. So all these welds are his in here. You got me almost thinking I need to get a welder. Everybody I've done, needs to get a welder. I, I don't care if you're a woodworker. You need a welder. There's just things where it goes crack. It's like, okay, make it out of metal. It won't make that noise. Fixing the trailer or the boat. Right? Yeah. I appreciate how you've uh, helped other people's, change, you know, to, giving publicity to people like that and their projects. Uh, oh, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Good. Leave it, we'll until, leave it yeah. until we know. You know? It's easier so to cut done. it than to stretch it later. Yeah. Although that's one of the things about the metal in your project that's so different than wood is... You can put it back together. Right. Like, like that's I, a I was, big deal with a piece of wood. The transom, the, for the chalk <laughs> to go in the transom back there. So I'm a foot and a half off and I run the plasma torch down and I step back and like, Shit, that's not the center of the boat at all. I don't know what I did. I just get the welder and weld it back Put up. Back right, it's food. Do it again. Just leave it off the video and nobody ever knows. But you, know, <laughs> but you know, you put it on your video and then all of a sudden people understand that, oh, well, I think that's guys that supposedly know what they're doing screw it up. And they do. You know, everybody screws up. Yeah, I've appreciated that. So, yeah, on it. so it's like we're going to make the harbor, you know, even though when it's blowing, it, it's, it's starting to blow hard. And what you really ought to do maybe is stand off mm -hmm. and just suck it up and live a day longer out on the water getting beat around mm -hmm. rather than trying to make that harbor entrance. And they get in there and they're, they're they, you know, the weather is the first time they've been caught out and they're gunned that engine up. And it's the first time those tanks have been pitched Slosh around, around and that, that slime comes up. <laughs> they had to take care of it and it I goes and plugs those filters. Definitely right. Right there beside that jetty, that engine goes, whoa. <laughs> Or in the little channel between the corals. Yeah. And, and now all of a sudden, you're a sailor where no sailor would ever put himself. <laughs> but yeah, this voice thing is a, normally a pain in the ass, but doing this stuff just myself to, to be working on be nice something. On and camera, say, I gotta go over and turn it over. Exactly. Yeah, turn just it off, turn it yell back on. it. Those portholes are cool too. Yeah. 
we're going to go back and light and see. We cast the deadlights. I had a couple of right. deadlights on them, so we took one of the deadlights and just dressed it up. Martin Luther King. That's awesome. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hatred cannot drive out hatred. Only love can do that. MLK. Yep. We need another MLK. We we could use that example. It's it's getting dicey. Because <laughs> we're gonna have a riot to, to make our points. Like, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna make a point. It's not the be, one you want to make. Be just like the people you're trying, trying to you're, you're plant. protesting against. Yeah. Yeah. This guy is one of my favorites. He's he's not widely known. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space, our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. Frankel. Yeah. Victor Frankl, he was a uh, psychologist who survived the concentration. That's what I was thinking, yeah. I have not read uh, any of his works, but I've heard the name. He's got one book you, you, you ought to read, and it's uh, Man's Search for Meaning. If you can find happiness in a concentration camp, yeah. that's the man I want to live my life after. No kidding. Yeah, care, compassion, love. Yep. I read Corey Ten Boom's stuff. Uh, her family sheltered Jews in Netherlands. Her dad was just a watchmaker guy, yeah. this humble guy. But he always loved uh, talking about the Bible with Jewish people, and then the whole Nazi thing came in. So they started sheltering Jews and eventually got ratted out. All of them went to the camps. All of them died except for her. So she survived to write about the experience and what she did afterwards, and part of it was to go help Germans come back out of the whole thing. Really? <laughs> pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so you didn't start this thinking about the video and the no. internet portion of it? No, I didn't even think I'd be doing this with other people like John mm -hmm. up and on the boat or Bart or any other couple hundred people that have been through here. I thought I'd be building this boat pretty much by myself. And the internet thing, you know, I thought I'd have, I knew I was gonna document with video, I'd like that. But because I have been a teacher, so I kind of like that idea of Just, helping other people out. But I thought the audience would be like, you know, 150. I, I caught it in the middle and I thought, you know, I need to go back to the start of this thing. And the first video I think was like a foggy camera on a pole oh, when yeah. the sheet was Crap sheets of steel video. were dropped oh, off. Oh, it's just Yeah, I go back and look at an old video and like, oh my God. And, and later on, you, you had an episode where you're like, look, if you haven't done this before, just try to make videos and they'll suck. Yeah. And you'll get better. And it'll be fine. And so I like, and that kind of tipped me over the edge. I had a friend who wanted me to design and build him a little sailing rowboat and I did it. It was a third boat and I, and my wife loved it. It was like simple compared to the big one I built when our kids were little. I know your boats now. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. I thought, all right, this is probably the last time I'm going to, I got it in me to do one of these, start from scratch, you know, and all the right. work to, to work it out from scratch. And then I caught your video and I thought, I've really enjoyed watching other people do this. And yeah. yes, it's going to suck. Well, yeah, so. but you have a, you have a technique <laughs> and a style that other people are going to, and we passed it on, you know. Uh, I just like watching your stuff just because it's like it's somebody else that's, that's passionate about what they're doing. And that's enough. That is a it big part of It gets me off the couch, it? you know. It's like, here's this guy and he's building a boat and, you know, he's sailing and enjoying it and all no the water. One, no like, one's died yet, so that's what I always say. Yeah. yeah. People say, did you build that? Yeah, I designed it too, and no one's died. Yeah. So, but, but. But so your first video, I remember, was just really basic, and you were just thinking you're going to document it almost for your own sake. And it's pretty much, yeah, it's pretty much that. Well, it was a real, it was a technical approach. Like, here's the facts. This is what I'm doing. Uh, and how to do welds that don't distort the yeah. metal and the other, all those technical so, problems. Yeah, you know, I've been a teacher too long that it's like you just don't do something. You do it and you document, you know, and you share it a little bit. And I really, I knew there'd be other people like me out there because I was just come through that. It's like I'm looking at boats and trying to figure out how this is done. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I need to dumb it down because I'm the person who doesn't know how to do any of it. So take so it from perfect. Take it from the baseline. I can show you what the amateur is going to be able to do. Yeah. Because I'm the amateur, and uh, so that's been my approach all along, I, and it just grew into something much, much bigger than what I anticipated. That's that's really fun. I remember the point where you you were you you went in to show your work at, at one point. 
like, like you drove oh, in, yeah. into the office yeah, and all that. Yeah, the camera in the building. And, and pretty soon thereafter, you were able to just quit. Yeah. I think in that episode, you said, and yes, I use my work computer to edit these videos. Yeah. <laughs> He's building a boat. He's going to quit pretty soon, right? <laughs> So how far into it were you then when you went like full time? I went full time two and a half years ago. Oh, I thought it was a lot longer. No, no, just that. two and a half years ago. Wow. Yeah. No, I'd come home for, for lunch and change clothes, work on the boat a bit, and go back. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got a programming to DBA and I learned, wow, this can be cush. Cause I can a little more predictable. It's Look. very predictable yeah. and it's very, it's complicated. It's all moving parts, but you can automate all of them. And you can put a box around that complexity, I think. And yeah, exactly. So an hour later, they're up and running, and it's like, I had made my you're mark. In. I didn't have to do anything after you're in. that. <laughs> you have to shoot somebody on film and get fired after that. Yeah. <laughs> All the plumbing stuff you've been doing is very impressive, too. Yeah, that's, well, that's easy out. when it's out on the wall. Well, and I like how you're planning on just leaving these things accessible as Everything. much as you can. Yeah, it makes it easy to change. It's like, you know, it'd be a little better if it was like this. Well, fine. It's just unscrew it and cut it and move it over and bring right. it back in. Do you worry about crew getting confused on some of these things? Uh, you talked about it a little bit one time. You know, time. it helps a lot to have it exposed because you can see what it's going. Well, that's what I was thinking. Going, so that I think it helps a lot. Yeah. You can see the pipe goes from the pump to there. It's like, do you need a label that says this pipe goes from pump to here? If you yeah. do, you don't need to be messing with the water breaker. The uh, battle on the coatings thing was fascinating. I really appreciated how you covered yeah. that in depth. Well, I had a problem with this. Most of my problem is getting the coating too too thin. See, I got water standing on that a little bit now. Yep. But it's not a big deal. It's a steel boat. You're going to have these issues. You, you figure like there's, every there's three years or so right you may come through and no, just... No, I think every three months you go around and you, you know, you find these spots and you make a list of them. And then you, you go, when somebody said, okay, we're going to fix this. And you say, and here's a list of 12 other spots around the boat. Right. Hit them with some sandpaper and put a little more paint on. Them. Like, there's your uh, right. accessibility paying off, right? Yeah. So you can keep an eye on it. Yeah, we keep an eye on it. There's an inspection port on that plug there, too. We can pull it out and look inside this tank here. Did you ever read a book called The Last Grain Race? No, I haven't, but I've heard that one, too. <sighs> we read it out loud to our kids, finally. We loved it so much. Yeah, those, that last age of sale. Yeah. Steel clippers, and yeah. some big Swedish mate was always screaming at him, knock a roost. There's knock rust off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We cast her up with peller blades, you know. You can buy the metal for $6.50 a pound. And you're setting yourself up that if you need to do that kind of operation again how. somewhere, yeah, you'll know. have pretty much what it's you like need. It's like why we use the Tormac to try and make a uh, broach of Kiwi in it today. We now know that you can't do that. <laughs> Here's the sail model. The house out there in the spring. Where is he taking it? It's just a mile and a quarter away. For Mizzen and Maine? I think, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, let's call it that. That, that may be the, the main there in the middle, but about 350 with the battens attached to it. Boy, that was a lot of work. Yeah, it looked like a lot of work. That is either hefty, hefty it stuff is. to be running running a it's, sewing machine through. It is <laughs> not your normal sail And material. you got what, triple? tripled over at the at the oh, seams here there's or? places in there where there's 17 folds of material oh my god because you're on a you know where the you're on a, a joint like this and you get to run that joint up and these are folding it over that. again thinking ahead yeah so we can shear them off and the cool thing is you can just take the 10 millimeter bolts out the back pull the hub off field dress over there oh it's smaller a lot smaller yeah yeah yeah, yeah. These bilge keels are a great design. Set her down at high tide in a nice tidal zone and you can do little bits of maintenance. Especially with the skag protecting the prop and the shroud protecting the prop too. We've got some stuff. And the crowds are coming, coming in. 
it's kind of time to begin the journey northeast. To the Mississippi. Actually managed to get some sleep and uh, wrap this drive up. So amazing uh, how much time Doug took for me out of his super busy day and uh, actually giving me unexpectedly a little plug too for uh, Rudy Woodcraft channel. Thanks Doug. Super glad I took the trip. Really thinking about coming back down uh, during the August time frame before Seeker hits the open ocean. Bring one of the boats down and do some sailing with Seeker that way. 